Hello friends, in this video, I am going to give you important points on how to apply the phase rule. First look at these two problems and if you can solve these two problems and get the exact answer, this video has nothing new to offer you. Now let me give you the important points while applying the phase rule. First discuss while calculating number of phases. Point number one, all gases are taken as one phase. It is just according to the definition of the phase, right? The point number two is all those liquids which are invisible, which means they com are completely separable, are considered as a different phases. And the point three is most obvious one. All solids are taken as completely separate phases. Now, let's discuss the important points while counting the number of independent components. Friends, here P plus F is equal to C plus 2. Here C is total number of independent components. So we should be aware whenever a question is given, we need to look for the total number of independent components. Whenever a reaction is given to us, total number of independent components becomes total components in the system minus 1. If one reaction is given, if a series of reactions are given, if a series of n reactions are given, the total number of independent components becomes total number of components minus n. Here small c is total independent components, which is this, and c is total components and these total given reactions. Friends, just take a screenshot of this, uh, so it might help you later. Now I'm going to explain why we need to subtract n. Here let's consider a reaction A plus B gives rise to C. Here if we look we are having total number of components 3 right A, B and C. But if we see we can write the equilibrium constant as C by A into B like concentrations. But here if we fix A and B, C automatically gets fixed because K is an equilibrium constant. So if we fix A and B, C automatically becomes dependent. So here if we have 3 components and if we fix 2, the third one is automatically become dependent on the other component. So, if total number of components are 3, total number of independent components are 3 minus 1. In this reaction, we are having only two independent components. So, like this, if we were given n reactions, so total number of independent components becomes total number of components minus n. n is the total number of reactions here. Why? Because each equation is having different equilibrium constant. Now the phase rule gets modified as P plus F is equal to C plus 2 to P plus F is equal to capital C minus N plus 2. Friends, now let's discuss the questions that I have shown earlier. Very simple guys, so now I'm going to find out number of phases. Number of phases P is equal to 1, 2, 3, right? And number of components, capital C is total number of components, which is also 3, right? And number of reactions is equal to 1. Let's substitute these values in the formula. So after substituting, we get F is equal to 1. I hope you understood this properly, guys. If you have any doubts, please drop a comment. I'll be very happy to reply. Now let's discuss the second question. Friends, this is a very interesting question. It was given in Metallurgy Gate 2022. Friends, just like the last problem here also, let's find out. P. Total number of phases. Let's look at the important points that we discussed in the beginning. Total number of solids, 1 and 2. Right? Total number of gas 1 and 2. But we remember that all gases are considered as one phase. So total number of phases becomes 3. Right? So capital C is total number of components or total number of reacting consistence. 1, 2, 3, 4. Total number of reactions 1. So let's substitute guys. Substitution we get F is equal to P. 